a very warm welcome to this new session. My name is Ms. Prachivani and today we are going to discuss about menu and menu merchandising. So this topic will have a little understanding about what menu is and merchandising is. Then we will talk about various types of menus, menu presentation and menu pricing. So the menu is a list of food and beverages which are available in any food and beverage outlet for a sale. It is a primary selling tool which is used to increase the revenue. So menu card helps to identify the preparations which are served in the restaurant, description of the dish, price and any other charges if they are involved. An organization needs to have a menu which meets the objectives of financial, catering and marketing policies. What is menu mercantizing? A menu mercantizing is to make the most effective use of menus in advertising and selling to stimulate the sale in a particular food and beverage outlet. We will understand menu mercantizing in detail very soon. types of food menus. Here the first food menu that we see is table d'hote. Here we offer restricted choices and we have limited choices within each course. So a TDH menu can have four course menu or a five course menu. Under every course we will have limited choice and this menu has a fixed selling price. All these dishes are ready at one time because we know the order in advance. A small number of dishes are offered in compared to a la carte and they can be offered for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Let's talk about a la carte menus now. Here we have more choices than table d'hote menu. Listing of various dishes are already given under various courses and all dishes are prepared according to the order. Here as we know the order in table d'hote in advance in a la carte we are not aware about the kind of order customer is going to place. Hence the dishes are prepared according to the order. Each dish is separately priced and it is comparatively little expensive than TDH because again TBH has a fixed priced menu because that is where the menu is pre-decided. In a la carte, guest will take a particular course according to his choice. We also have a relatively new menu which is introduced in the market called as testing menu. Here, a testing menu which is a set meal with a range of courses, often in between 6 to 10 courses. Now these tasting menus are offered in restaurants where the chef offers a sample of the range of dishes which are available on the main page, the main menu. These are various types of other menus which are available in the market. Uh, the first one is breakfast menu. Breakfast is the first meal of the day which is served between 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. We have brunch menu which is a combination of a breakfast and lunch consumed late in the morning between 10 to 12 noon. Lunch menu. This menu includes dishes which are offered during lunch mostly from 12 noon to 3 pm. Afternoon and high tea menu. Here this menu is served from around 3 pm to 6 pm and this menu will include bread, toast, sandwiches, grills, fish, salad, ice cream and tea coffee. We have a dinner menu which is served from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Supper menu is when we have a light evening meal mostly taken before dinner. It is also served late at night. Function menus are our banquet menus. So these are planned for birthday parties, wedding anniversaries, Christmas Eve or New Year Eve. Room service menu 
Uh, this menu contains a list of dishes which are available for service in guest rooms, mostly for 24 hours. Californian menu, which uh, is, we have lots to offer on uh, Californian menu and the dishes are available round the clock. That menu, now this menu is need of an hour today. It is an important menu that is gaining a lot of importance. So this menu can have gluten free uh, meal or whole wheat, multigrain, chemical and organic, chemical and artificial color free food products and we will also have organic food here. Crew menu is uh, when we have hotels having a special menu design for crew members of airline. Happy hour menu is this menu is aimed at boosting the revenue through sale of food and beverage during or slack period. It could be maybe uh, an evening hour from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And lastly, we have a speciality menu where it offers the special dishes of the day or week. Now let's talk about beverage menu. A beverage menu with the food menu can help increase the revenue. This is possible with the help of proper licenses. As we all know, when we have alcoholic beverages service happening, we need to have a liquor license, which is the primary requirement. It's important for a restaurant owner or a hotel owner to generate enough interest for a customer to buy beverages. Because primarily, you will have customers coming in the restaurant for food. So we will have to make sure that they are getting attracted towards the variety of beverages we are offering. So for example, a themed restaurant can sell wines from a particular country, obviously with right temperature and with the right food and beverage combination. So for example, if you are serving Italian food, you can offer Italian wines. Now, under beverage menus, we have various types of menus which we see in various types of food and beverage outlet. The first one is full wine list. Here, as the name says, it can be used in upmarket outlet. It is little difficult for us to design a full wine list because that selection of the wine should suit the type of the outlet. This type of menu can be printed in a book form with few pages because here we are talking about extensive list of wines. A brief description can help customers select the wine. So every wine can have a little description which talks about what kind of wine it is, a little information about grapes, a country and flavors. Full wine list should ideally have house wines, Champagne and sparkling wines, red wines, white wines, fortified wines, spirits, beer, mineral water and juices. This is an ideal sequence. This could be changed according to the wish of the restaurant owner. Then we talk about banquet menus. We are going to have a restricted menu here as compared to full wine menu. This menu will offer few wines but ones with the best quality and a wider price range products can be offered. So we can have good quality wines, but something which can a customer will be able to afford. Now under bar menus, these types of menus can be either be printed in a large size with prices on the back side of the menu, or it could be printed in small size, which can be placed on the tables like a 10 card. So cocktail bar menu should have cocktails, spirits, fortified wines, liquor, wine, mostly by glass and other mixers. Then we have room service beverage menu. Here the size of this menu will depend on the size and type of the establishment. Due to high labor cost in this department, a mini bar is kept in the rooms with variety of miniatures of spirits and mineral water. So whenever guest needs a, a particular type of spirit, you can open the mini bar, a miniature of that particular spirit would be available and the same will be charged to his room. 
Then we have promotional beverage menus. Here these menus can be seen whenever a promotion of a particular brand is happening. These can be printed specially for a small duration whenever the promotion is going to happen. And these can be made available in the form of 10 cards or standees by the supplier. So whoever wants to promote a particular beverage, particular brand can supply 10 cards or standees or a promotional material. Now, menu planning is based on the following factors. These factors are, the first one is the location of the establishment. Now, this is important both in terms of access for customers and for obtaining deliveries. A metro area outlet will have a different menu than the suburb one because the requirement of the demographic market is going to be different. The available kitchen space and equipment is absolutely important when we are planning for our menu because if the space is limited, then the storage, preparation and service of menu items will be restricted and a smaller menu will need to be put in place. The knowledge and ability of kitchen and skill of staff to ensure that they produce the menus to the desired standard. If you do not have a manpower who can make the preparations which are there on the menu, that menu is not going to be easy for you to sell. An outlet without skilled staff will not succeed for long. Now the style of the service, like formal or informal, will also decide the type of menu. The formal atmosphere will demand more work on the menu research. The opening times of the operation, for example, let's say a coffee shop, which will be open for 18 to 24 hours, will need a menu which can be prepared with ease. The number of covers to be served in a specific time is absolutely important. Here, the demand for healthy food needs to be considered and the menu can be twisted with innovation and with inclusion of diet food. A consideration of religion like kosher food for Jews or Hindus without beef or pork meat can be made available. So wherever you are located in terms of your location of the restaurant, the demographic condition should be kept in mind. Now whenever we are planning for a menu card, few things are to be kept in mind like menu layout should consider how much a customer would actually be able to read. So too much reading is going to be a little problematic for a customer because it's going to make him a little confused. So to the point information has to be mentioned on the menu card. The menu card should be easy to handle. It should not be too long. As I mentioned, your customers are not supposed to get confused by reading your menu. It should be easy to read, clear, precise, and enable customers to calculate how much money are they going to spend. So the menu has to be absolutely clear with the description and the price. Size and the shape of the menu card can add uniqueness to the restaurant. Menu card should be clean and presentable. Menu items need to have accurate menu description. Now, we are saying a menu should be well organized. Similar items should be placed in groups and attractive heading can be given. The menu should be as short as possible. The number of dishes on the menu can be limited because too extensive menus might be a little difficult for your team also to prepare and your customer will get confused in terms of having too many choices and he will not be able to pick up the right dish. It should be easy to change. Even the most carefully planned menus must be changed from time to time. To serve good food well and promptly, one must have a designed operation to fit the place. It must match the size and the kind of equipment, their capacity, also the scale of the personnel. Effective description with descriptive headings are inserted in the menu for various groups of food which will attract the attention of the customer and indicate the nature of the dishes more clearly. Now the menu is designed to sell the items that are the specialties of the hotel or an item which can be served fast and is profitable. 
so a lot of emphasis has to be given on the menu planning now when we doing menu pricing we have to remember that right pricing will get the customers to the outlet menu pricing needs to fulfill two main objectives the first one is customers need to get value for money and the organization needs to make adequate profit so to achieve this objective the various pricing models are given below the first one is cost based pricing which takes the ingredient or food cost element of the menu item and then adds up to the predetermined markup it's a very simple way of calculating the price the second pricing strategy is competition pricing wherein you just copy the competition the third one is rate of return it is an attempt to establish a break even point matrix based on the predicted cost and sales elasticity pricing considers the market and its sensitivity to price change it is based on the demand and supply of the product backward pricing is based on what customers will pay this model works after an organization has understood how much the customer will be able to pay prime cost attempts to calculate labor cost in addition to food cost and actual cost now there are other pricing considerations like service charge is charged to the customers which is a fixed percentage on the total bill it is decided by the management this works when we do not have tips system anymore now the second pricing consideration that we have to keep in mind is gst which is our goods and service tax is applicable from it has a range from 5% 12% and 18% depending on various factors cover charge is an additional charge to the meal in the restaurant which is paid to cover the minimum cost and minimum charge is applicable when we have customers utilizing the premises without generating enough revenue so minimum charge will give us minimum amount towards a seat occupied or a cover occupied now important factors to keep in mind the first one is departmental profit margin so we have to remember that every food and beverage department will contribute different profit percentage for example coffee shop will give us more profit compared to an a la carte speciality outlet and differential profit margin that means every product will have a different profit margin so different profit margin will be based on the sales mix for example a minestrone soup might contribute more in profit percentage than a main course like spaghetti bolognese on that note i hope you have watched the video carefully quiz link is in the video description so start thinking towards it references if you wish to gain more knowledge you can refer this books on that note thank you and see you soon in the meantime you all take care of your health